after you hear things on both sides, I still don't know what to make of Johnny. And oh my gosh, how disappointing was the outcome with Chris? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Stephanie Yates. I'm Vile Stephanie for short, and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. Today, I'm going to be talking about Johnny and Chris as individuals, as well as their brief relationship with one another. If you're curious, stay tuned. So one of the biggest requests that I got from you all is to kind of do more individual analysis and not focus as much on the couples. And I'm going to be kind of combining both because I do think there's so much to talk about with them separately. And since we only see such a small glimpse of their relationship, it wouldn't make sense to do a deep dive into their relationship. However, I do believe that since they're both on screen for such a short period of time, it does make sense to kind of combine them together. So I'm going to kind of talk about my first impressions of Chris and and Johnny and then I'm going to talk about what we've seen with them in other relationships and the relationship together now let me say as always I have to always emphasize this I am NOT these people's therapist so what does that mean I don't have the end-all be-all insight into their life I have never spoken with them personally so I can only go based on edited content and what it reminds me of clients that I work with and the text that I read make sure if any of these things apply to you or someone that you love in your life that's the most important thing that we can take away from these videos it's more important to me to be able to use this as a springboard for you all to improve the relationships in your lives both with the people that you love and with yourself another thing I have to say is that there will be spoilers I'm talking about everything that we've seen so far all the way up until the reunion so let's talk about first impressions you know we actually meet Chris before we meet Johnny I believe in the first episode and I automatically was kind of turned off by him because the first thing he says is that Just off my looks, everyone kind of thinks I'm a playboy. Let me tell you, as soon as somebody says something like that, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, so you probably are. Unfortunately, the thing that people try to ward us away from when we first meet them, a lot of times that ends up being our actual experience with them. And if you watched all the way until the reunion, you know that ended up being the case. So when Chris introduces himself as somebody that people see as a playboy, First, I thought it gave an inflated sense of self when it came to his looks, because I looked at him, to me, I wouldn't see him and think he was a playboy. I would just think he was like a regular, normal looking guy. So the fact that he said that told me that he sees himself in a very specific way physically. Now that's not to say that no one finds him attractive. As a matter of fact, in the reunion, many people said that they would hit on Chris if they were to see him in the real world. So he's definitely a lot of people's type, but I thought that it was a bit of a turnoff, the fact that that was the first first way that we were introduced to him I was like okay not my favorite thing when we look at how people originally introduced themselves sometimes you have to look past what they're saying and listen to the content Chris says people think I'm a playboy he ended up being a playboy Johnny says I seem like a giant red flag arguably that's what we saw Uche said people think that I love to argue because I'm a lawyer Ultimately, that's what we saw. So by a certain point, people know how they're perceived and a lot of times that perception ends up being another person's reality. So do pay close attention because people might be trying to disarm you in a way so that you don't see them that way, but that doesn't mean that it's not their truth. Now, one thing I noticed in the pods this season, there seemed to be a much higher focus on sex and I'm wondering if any of you guys noticed that as well. And it is important to talk about sex and sometimes we just don't have the tools to be able to articulate what we're wanting or what our past is sometimes talking about sex is not easy or comfortable but there are resources that can help you kind of work through talking about sex and that's why I'm happy to talk a little bit about Beducated. Beducated is an amazing online platform that provides education around pleasure-based sex you can learn about so many topics I mean I went down a complete rabbit hole looking at courses they have courses on vaginal orgasms sex toys 
absolutely anything you're interested in learning about, they have it on the website. I love looking at these courses because it helps me with my clients. I have a lot of couples who are struggling with sex. We could be struggling with sex when it comes to new transitions or if you're in a brand new relationship or even more commonly when you've been with someone for a really long time and it's time to spice things up. Has wonderful resources for kinks if you're into BDSM. Honestly, anything you're interested in, Beducated has a course for you. I love that you don't have to be in a relationship to get value from signing up for Beducated because it has courses on solo sex and masturbation as well. Beducated even has courses specifically around communication when it comes to talking with your partner about sex. If you're looking to gain confidence and learn more about your body and your partner's body, Beducated is definitely the best place to start. There are courses here that are well over five hours where you can break it down by video. And if you just need a sneak peek into what type of video this is, you can look at the quickies. I love that. So I can get an idea of what type of course this is. So if you're interested in trying Beducated out for yourself, and I highly recommend that you do, please check out the link in my description box or feel free to use the coupon code Stefania, and that will give you 40% off of an annual subscription. And you don't have to worry because you get a one day free trial. If you just want to be nosy, take a peek around there, see what's going on. You get a one day free trial. And if one day is not enough for you, there's a 14 day money back guarantee. So honestly, there's really no risk for you taking a peek around there and seeing if Beducated can meet your needs for education in the bedroom or anywhere you please. Now back to the video. They had the cards that they were using to ask each other questions about sex, which Johnny is a little bit shyer when she's talking about sex. I know when Izzy was asking her questions about lights on or off, if she's freaky, like those kind of things. And she was like, yeah, I'm kind of shy with this. Oh, are you? Yeah. They say the shy ones are the freakiest, so. Well, well, they may not be wrong. I don't know if that's the truth or not, but it definitely looks like it. Her cheeks were becoming flushed and things like that. Now, one thing I really like is that that did open a door for Johnny and Chris, that when they were having their conversations, Chris was able to open up about his past. In a warning, we're gonna talk here about sexual assault, not in graphic detail, but we will definitely be talking about it. So if that's something that you're uncomfortable with, I just wanna give you a heads up that that's where we're going next. So with Chris, what we learn about him is that he does have a history with sexual assault. And I thought that the fact that they included this in the edits was very good because we don't often talk about men being the victim of sexual assault. It is something that we see it's not as common as female victims, but it definitely happens. And he's absolutely right when he says that. I feel like there's a stigma on guys being pushed into sex. It's like, no, oh, you know, you have to get hard and then you have to do it. You yeah. know? It is something that's not taken seriously. You know, what's interesting is that when I'm encountering this in my work, it's usually a partner that's talking to me and they're explaining to me why they're having difficulties with their partner. And they say, well, you know, he's had this history of X, Y, Z. I've had this happen multiple times. That is actually much more common in my practice than it is for a male survivor to come to me and say, I need to work through this. Being a victim of sexual assault as a man puts you in a position where you don't feel comfortable. There's no community to talk about it. It is difficult for anyone to talk about being a victim of sexual assault. But for men especially, I think that it becomes even more difficult when we think about the social expectations of masculinity. We expect men to be stronger than a woman. We expect a man to be more easily aroused than a woman. And we expect that certain things have to be factored in to even have sex and we're thinking as Chris said if he was hard if he was erect then that means that it's something that he wanted there's actually a term for our bodies betraying what our mind wants them to do. In the book, Come As You Are, which is a book that we read in the What's On Your Page book club, if you're interested in joining, she introduced us to a phrase called non-concordance. And that is where your physical body may not act in a way that aligns with your mind. You, as a woman may be wet, as a man, you may be erect, you may even orgasm after experiencing sexual assault. And it does not mean that you consent. I was grateful that Chris opened up about this because it's something that can definitely affect and impact our satisfaction with sex. Them opening up this conversation was really important for us to start talking a little bit more about the fact that sexual assault can look many different ways. And there's not just one 
type of victim. And I think that with Chris, one thing that I noticed about him overall as a person, Chris is a peacemaker. So there are really four ways to interact. We've got passive, passive aggressive, aggressive, and assertive, which is the one that we're always aiming for. But I think Chris is a passive person. That may be a result of him surviving sexual assault. That is something that we see with trauma a lot of times is that you just end up learning to just go with the flow so that you're not putting up a resistance and dealing with even further trauma. Now it is important to say that not all survivors are passive. This is just one of many ways that you can respond to trauma. And it looks like that might be the way that Chris has responded responded just looking at his avoidance of conflict. And we see that happening when Johnny tries to re-engage him. He just kind of lets the cards fall where they may. And even when it comes to the point where he no longer wants to be with Johnny, instead of being assertive and having a conversation with her, he kind of just completely ghosts her in a way of probably avoiding conflict. We even see in the interaction that happens with him, Izzy, Johnny, and Stacy. Izzy is being really aggressive and we'll get to Izzy and Stacy in a later video. But looking at how Chris handled that situation, when Izzy is talking to him, he's kind of defending Johnny, but not really. She, I would she never. told you she loved you in there? Four times, I counted it. She was in love with me. I know that. He's more so just not agreeing with Izzy, essentially. He's out for you because you're good. an amazing All guy. four of us are not good. <laughs> We're good. When Johnny comes back to him after Izzy is really aggressive with her and talks to Chris, he's like, oh, don't worry, of course, I wanna be with you. He's like, and he told Izzy. I think she's amazing. I just don't want you or anybody feeding her information that's not true. So well, if you didn't, then that's yeah, I did not. He doesn't wanna ruffle anyone's feathers. He's not getting aggressive with anyone. I think that he has learned to repress those emotions in a way that's not going to lead to more issues or conflict. So now let's talk about Johnny. First impressions with Johnny, she seems like she's a very soft-spoken person. I think a lot of times the thing about people being soft-spoken is that we interpret them a very specific way as either shy or gentle or kind or nice when really it's nothing but a reflection of just how loudly they speak. With Johnny, Izzy describes her as having like this calming demeanor and I could totally see that. She just definitely seemed to respond in a very calm way. She was open with him right away about her past relationships. She was one of the only people that was married previously this season. The thing that stood out to me about Johnny is when she talked about how her own mother told her that maybe she's not meant to be in a relationship. And I thought that that was a really interesting thing for her mom to tell her, especially since most often you see mothers being very, very invested in getting grandchildren and seeing their kids become married, especially since Johnny says that her parents are still together. So that started making me think immediately that there may be some things about Johnny that we have not seen yet, especially since she referred to herself as a giant red flag, even though she says, hey, I've got my life together now. Now, I also wanna talk about Johnny saying that she has a history of dating people that have addiction issues. And what does that mean? Why does she keep attracting that? Now, there are a lot of different reasons why, but what I do see a lot of times for people who are constantly in relationships with people who have addiction issues, it's usually one of two things or both. One of those things is viewing people as a project in a way, wanting to kind of help fix somebody. Another thing is that you have kind of a low view of yourself or your self-worth, self-confidence is low. There's a part of you that thinks that you're deserving of people who are more preoccupied with other things or other people over you. So you constantly get in the habit of choosing people who do not prioritize you, which we do see end up playing out again, both with her choosing Izzy and with Chris. Both of them ultimately end up picking other women over her, just as an addict would probably choose their vices over you as well. And the third thing I see is that if she is attracted to people who have addiction issues, it doesn't just stop at substances. Sometimes it's relationships as well. So you'll see sometimes a person with an addiction being very clingy and addicted to that partner. They're addicted to this relationship in the serotonin and endorphins that are released in the honeymoon stage of a relationship. And Johnny may end up basking in a person being so focused on her and craving her so badly in a way like they would crave a vice. But because those 
relational dynamics can be short-lived. They end up turning back to the vices or maybe they were always using those vices even throughout the time of being with them. And you end up really still not being the their priority or the center of their attention. Something else that would be a little bit of a yellow flag for me, Johnny says, I kind of been through the ringer in my past relationships. I take responsibility for that. Like I chose those kind of dudes in the past. Now that's not really taking accountability, right? Because essentially what you're saying is that it was still their fault that the relationships didn't work out and it was your fault just for choosing them. Taking accountability is recognizing your actions within the relationships that affect the relationships as well. How do you enable these people in those relationships? Why do you keep picking these people, right? It's not just the fact that you're choosing them. Chris says, very mature of you. I don't think that's very mature because the mature thing is to be able to say, the reason I pick these people is because I have low self-worth or I pick these people because I have really enjoyed being the focus of a person's attention. Being able to recognize those sorts of things, understand why you make those decisions, understand what you do during the relationships that help to sustain the relationships amidst those issues, that's taking accountability. Simply saying, I choose the wrong people, I'm sorry. A lot of people do that. That is not taking accountability. That's just another way of reframing blaming the other person for why the relationship wasn't working out well. When Johnny breaks up with Chris, I believe she's doing it because she thinks that Izzy's going to do the same thing with Stacy. In my opinion, that is not how you should participate in this experiment. You should break up with people because you don't see a future with them. Not that you want to use the breakup with them as a grand gesture for the other person, right? Because the thing that changed her mind about moving forward with Chris was not some sense of remorse about their connection. It was about the fact that she was blindsided by the fact that Izzy didn't do the same with Stacy. Now she's like scrambling, like, oh my goodness, I, I should have picked Chris because Izzy doesn't really want me. It's, did you have a connection with Chris where you could see a future with him and you could see yourself marrying him? If you did still see that, if you still had hope for that, you shouldn't break up with him. And if you don't see that, you should. We've definitely seen people break up in the pods and then their top person doesn't choose them and they don't go running back to the other person because they've already ruled them out as someone they don't wanna move forward with. That is not a crazy ask. And I think that Johnny really felt betrayed by Izzy in a way where she's like, oh, I should be with the person that wants to be with me. To me, it was a little too late. And I was definitely hoping that Chris could see through that. Chris tells Johnny that he loves her and Johnny says she really likes him, but she tells Izzy that she loves him and Izzy doesn't return that back to her. So that's part of the reason why it was so difficult to see her all of a sudden trying to get Chris to propose to her. Essentially, if that's what you're trying to have dates again with somebody in the pods, that's what you're wanting them to do, right? Is to propose at the end. So it seemed really inauthentic because you've never said that you love Love Chris and it seems like you're recognizing you should be with Chris because he loves you and Izzy doesn't. I think Johnny was just trying to avoid the feeling of being rejected. She wanted to go back to the person that can make her feel wanted. Nobody wants to feel rejected or abandoned or betrayed but I think using another person to soothe that balm is really selfish because it's not fair to them to have to heal you in that way. Now I will say I can see why Chris and Izzy found what Johnny was saying to be disingenuous because she was telling Izzy. Chris would have been repeating the past few relationships where I go into something that feels like it makes sense and I wouldn't get hurt because my heart's not there that Chris is somebody she would typically go for. It's an easy life. She knows exactly the kind of life that she would have with him and that she's wanting something with more spark, I'm assuming more passion. That's the energy she wants. And then she goes on to tell Chris, I'm wondering if I repeated a pattern with Izzy because I tend to go for people who are emotionally unavailable. She always goes for this type of guy and not just the guy who is calm and loving and reassuring. So I absolutely agree with them that she was being dishonest because it's one or the other. Are you with men typically that make you feel on edge and nervous 
and that chemistry are you with men that are really peaceful and calm i was actually really impressed when chris and izzy had that conversation and were able to tease that out because i was like there's no way they're going to be able to explain this in a way where they can kind of expose her for telling them two opposite things and they absolutely did the moment when chris turned johnny down and says that he doesn't want to move forward with her I was actually relieved because it seemed that once Izzy broke up with Johnny, her end game was just to have someone to be with someone. And she's like, man, maybe I broke up with the wrong person. And that could be true, right? We saw something like this unfold with Zach and Bliss and Irina. We saw a person be with someone and then realize that that was not their person. But the fact that Johnny was so quick to go back to Chris, it just seemed like she wanted it to be with the person that wanted her and there's always going to be that question of do you just want to be on the show that is something that i also always have to question because since the show has become more popular you are going to have those people but i do believe that johnny was being dishonest with chris and izzy i still don't know what the type of men she typically dates are because she was telling both of them opposite things and i do feel that she was trying to course correct with chris in a way that really seemed like she was pleading or desperate it just did not seem very genuine to me once chris said no to her i felt like okay i think he made a good decision that's how i felt and then later on to find out that they were dating I was surprised by that. Now, somebody might ask, what do I think about the situation with Johnny and Stacy? And again, this is not a video about Stacy, but of course I will have to touch a little bit on their relationship. I think they're in a difficult position because they're living together and both of them have the same person as their top person. Stacy is basically saying that she was holding empathy for Johnny. And once she found out that Johnny was actually not being empathetic towards her and was being judgmental of her and actually saying bad things about her, that's where she completely changed her perspective on her, which does make sense. But for me, just me looking at that situation, we have seen this before. I'm going to take us back to the Zach Bliss Irina situation. Bliss said the same thing to Tiffany in the lounge about Irina. When Zach broke up with her and decided to move forward with Irina, Bliss was like, like he's going to see he's going to see that this is not the best choice for him right and nobody really gave her lack for that because everyone saw how Irina was in the pods and I knew that Zach had never seen that version of her that can be a mean girl and I think that Johnny may have seen some things with Stacy that made her feel that confident that she was not the one for Izzy and if she's what he wants then his issues are gonna be outside of here <laughs> or she could just be jealous that Izzy picked her and was just trashing her and she could have just felt like intimidated by Stacy and was trying to throw her under the bus it could absolutely be that but the thing that I think really stood out for me is that in certain situations, we're more understanding of it than others. I didn't really blame Johnny for feeling that Izzy was not going to be happy with Stacy based on limited interactions with her. If Johnny doesn't feel like she's really connecting with Stacy, if she feels like Stacy's holding a lot back in her conversations, obviously her perception of Stacy could be skewed. They're not close. They don't know each other that well. It didn't take a lot for Stacy to completely turn on Johnny in a way that I thought was quite antagonistic. And I will get more into that in the video with Stacy. Another thing that that people have asked about are my thoughts around how Johnny was responding to the information that Uche was giving her about Lydia. Now, Stacy has come out later and said that Johnny and Lydia were really close, but based on what we saw, I've always seen Lydia with Aaliyah. So maybe Johnny and Lydia were really were close. Lydia has said that what Stacy said was true. But the way that Johnny's responding to it, I did not see a problem with that. Um, again, it did feel like Stacy was antagonizing Johnny. Is your face okay? Hold on. She, she, she yeah, blocked. I mean, she, hold on. She blocked my Instagram. Is your profile. face okay? Because it's not like she was saying something directly to Stacy. Stacy just looked at her and started commenting on her face. Johnny was, to me, she was demonstrating shock. That's how I felt when Uche was saying that or when Aaliyah was saying that. When it started coming out that maybe there was a chance that Lydia was there because she knew Uche was going to be there, that to me was the appropriate reaction. You would be shocked or surprised about information like that. I don't think that that was her being disloyal especially because when Lydia came back Johnny asked her about it directly she said I know the situation I know you have good intentions 
Uche is like very convincing though. So I don't think that it was really a problem. I think that Stacey made it bigger than it really was. I think Johnny was responding to some very surprising information. And I don't think that it should have been taken out of proportion in that way. I don't think there was anything disingenuine about that facial reaction. I think it was just organic. At the reunion, when Stacy was talking, even though she wasn't making direct eye contact with Johnny, she was speaking directly about her experience with Johnny. And Johnny uses that every time Stacy was talking as an opportunity to whisper to Chris and talk with him as if the cameras aren't on her, this is the part that has nothing to do with her. These are the moments where I really don't know what to make of Johnny's character. I do understand why Stacy was upset about Johnny saying mean things behind her back to the other people. I can see why that made her upset. I think Stacy went a little hard on that. Again, we'll get to that later. But I thought that the way Johnny handled the situation, she didn't seem to be super mean or yelling towards Stacy during those moments. But again, she is more soft-spoken. So that might just be how she speaks. And because she she is not someone that we see every episode. There's always going to be mystery around these people. I know a lot of us were dumbfounded to hear about the situation that happened with Chris. I'm sure a lot of you will say you saw it coming. You know, some of you guys are like fortune tellers. You see things without there being absolutely anything to support it. But for me, I didn't see that coming. That was a very surprising thing for me to see is that Chris cheated on Johnny and never even gave her the courtesy of breaking up with her. He went out of town for a wedding and she never saw him again. That was a crazy realization, which of course puts Johnny in a position of being the victim. I definitely feel sympathy for her in that situation, but it also makes me think, what happened? Was there something that Chris witnessed with Johnny? Was there something missing where he left for a trip, made a connection with someone that clearly was so strong that he's still with them now and didn't even think to tell her? I just want to know what happened behind the scenes. So overall, I think we've really learned everything we needed to learn about Chris and Johnny within maybe the first couple of minutes of meeting them. Chris did end up being a playboy because the way that he treated Johnny is not consistent with the person he portrayed himself to be which is caring and dedicated and committed and emotionally mature he really made it seem as though he was emotionally mature and in reality he avoided conflict in a way that really ended up hurting her and my impression with Johnny I'm sorry is that I can see why someone could interpret her as being a big red flag in that she definitely seems to maintain a certain level of self-centeredness it seems like when it comes to dating even with her ex-husband I would have liked to hear more about that situation but it seemed to me as though she was basically saying that she married someone that she was never really fully in love with and that kind of lets you know that she moved forward with it just because the person chose her not giving as much focus on how she was feeling toward that person and what she can provide them with emotionally. Again, because they didn't get a lot of screen time, there's not a ton to talk about. So those are my thoughts on Chris and Johnny's individuals, their relationships together, and the little bit of drama that unfolded between them, Izzy and Stacy. Of course, I'll be talking a lot more about that in the Izzy and Stacy video, so make sure you stay tuned and are subscribed so that you know the next video that I have coming out. Please like this video and share it with any other Love is Blind fans. This season overall was not my favorite season at all but we do as usual have a lot to talk about so there are a lot more videos to come please make sure to check out Beducated in the description box below or use this coupon code so that you can get 40% off of a yearly subscription. I think it's an amazing resource for anyone who's wanting to become more confident as a lover, learn more about your own body, and really most importantly to mitigate that shame around sex. Thank you for watching this video all the way until the end. You didn't have to, but it means so much that you did. And thank you for anyone who's in the live premiere. You guys are the best. I love chatting with you and getting your live reactions during the video. So so thank you, thank you, thank you.